Welcome to Beauty and the Biohacker, where we explore the latest tools and trends in self-care, aesthetics, and peak performance to help you live your most beautiful life from the inside out. I'm your co-host, Rachel Varga, a board-certified aesthetic nurse specialist since 2011 with over 19,000 rejuvenation treatments performed on thousands of patients. And I'm Katie Moore, a self-proclaimed biohacker with three years of self-experimenting in the space of health and wellness technology. I'm on a mission to help you achieve success without sacrificing your health or happiness through my YouTube channel, Katie Type A. So join us as we sit down with some of the biggest innovators in the health space, the movers and shakers of the wellness world, and unpack some of the biggest secrets in the skincare and longevity space. We are Beauty and the Biohacker, and we're thrilled to have you along for the ride. Hello, and welcome to today's episode right here on the Beauty and the Biohacker podcast with Katie Moore and I, and this is going to be a really kind of like ultra nerdy episode for the biohackers tuning in here. And in today's episode, we're going to cover with a professionally trained medical researcher, no less, things like peptides, the secrets to longevity, the latest information on stem cells, and much, much more. Let me tell you a little bit about our guest here today. And first things first, be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification so that you know when new episodes are launched and you can learn more about Katie and I, how to work with us 101, check out past episodes and all of our favorite things over at beautyandthebiohacker.com. So Dr. Serge has a PhD in the field of experimental medicine from McGill University in Quebec, Canada, fellow Canadian here. He is a fellow of Harvard Medical School, Massachusetts General Hospital, and Harvard Stem Cell Institute. He is a member of the Academy of Integrative Health and Medicine and also a board certified member of the Academy of Environmental Medicine. He serves as an expert witness for the Expert Institute. This institute provides experts to attorneys and law firms that require in-depth expertise on medical issues and legal cases. He is a functional medicine expert and clinical herbalist. He has authored four books on health-related topics. He has published 20 articles in peer-reviewed scientific journals. I mentioned this last time. I got some catching up to do. I'm at about four right now. I got two in the works right now. (laughs) And Dr. Serge holds an advanced certification in nutrition response testing, otherwise known as NRT, from Ulan Nutritional Systems in Florida. And he's a certified herbalist through the Australian College of phytotherapy. He has a position to help people to regain their health. So people like Dr. Serge are just a wealth of wisdom, blending both the Western traditional side of healing with more of the holistics. And but but also, you know, as a medical researcher, you know what's up. Welcome, Dr. Serge. It's great to have you on the show here with Katie and I. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having me. So why don't we kick things off with really what is your story and what is it like to be a professionally trained experimental medical researcher and really what has been your greatest aha moment in your work, in your clinical work and with clients? This is a good question that has a few, uh, I can go different ways with this, but the first thing that really woke me up to the system is um, myself I was dealing with a lot of health issues uh, for the last 20 plus years. I was looking for answers for my health problems and I would go see medical doctors. And, you know, I was stuck in that cycle of seeing doctors and doctors and doctors and nobody had the answer of why I had issues. I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia. I was diagnosed with chronic fatigue, with depression, with Lyme disease. Uh, thyroid problems. I mean, I had all those different names that doctors would tell me that I had, but none of them really gave me answers to fix my body so I can regain my health. So I had to take in charge of my health. You know, I had to research myself. Back then I was in medical school. I wanted to go that conventional route. Uh, but when I realized that I didn't get answers from my colleagues and my friends, I had to research and go a different path. And I came across, of course, functional medicine, nutrition, diet. And that really started my journey, uh, my interest to look at the body, how the body works as a totality, you know, 
Because medical doctors, that's one weakness that I see that I have witnessed is they look at you as organ specific, meaning that you look at one organ at a time. Uh, I had all those doctors that I saw. I saw a liver doctor, I saw a gut doctor, I saw a heart doctor, and no, none of them then talk with each other. So as a post holistic functional medicine, and each part does something in the body. So that's why I was really intrigued by this aspect of functional medicine. And I started to research, I changed my path. Uh, I went to school for this. Uh, and now I'm really excited to help people like myself who didn't have answers uh, about their health issues. And at the end of the day, I didn't have thyroid problems. I didn't have chronic fatigue. I had food issues. You know, a lot of the things that I've researched in kind of my own self-experimentation of trying to heal my own personal issues, because I really do think that's kind of at the forefront of why everybody gets into this type of, um, you know, self-quantification or biohacking is you're really kind of tapped out of all these, you know, things that you're hearing from other people and all this, you know, medical information. And so you really kind of take your health in your own hands. And a lot of what I have come to understand is so much of it stems from your brain. And I'm not going to ask you any very specific brain questions, but how much of this do you think was psychological versus physiological? No, it's really interesting that you're talking about this because my office is called Mind and Body Solution. So my clinic is Mind and Body. So we do a lot of mind and body work. So we look at deficiencies, we look at toxins, all those different things. And I feel from my experience, I'm not an expert in that specific field, but I would say somewhere between 70 and 75% of what I see with people uh, comes from mindsets, come from the mind, come from trauma, from stress. And we have different tools that we use to address those traumas. And a lot of people are stuck in that, that fight or flight, for example. They are tensed up and, and the stress hormone is higher than what it needs to be, leading to deficiencies, organ breakdowns. And it, it, and it originates from the past, not just from the past, but sometimes it can be from two or three generations before you. It can be from bloodline issues, for example. So there's a lot that covers health, not just physical health, but mind and spiritual. I love that you brought in the whole body, mind, spirit, energy sort of ecosystem, if you will, because I'm a huge fan of this too, right? The physiological and psychological needs, energetic, spiritual, they're really not separated, like what you mentioned in my first question. Um, and providers tend to look at different body systems as separate, but it's just incredible seeing, seeing practitioners like you on the forefront of things like peptides that we're just going to get into in a second here. And just the FYI, what we talk about here is a medical information. It's educational purposes only. If you think you have the med a medical condition, seek the guidance of a licensed physician. Fun tip, seek a physician that also has functional training as well. Those really are the rock stars. What would you say is the secret to longevity? What are your most vibrant, radiant, successful, balanced clients doing? This is a question that I guess I could go, go different ways, right? Uh, I'm an expert in detoxification, cleansing. Uh, to me, that's the foundation of health. Uh, your body, our bodies are not meant to handle that much poison from, from our life, from our foods, from our water, from our air. Uh, of course, the body has the tools, the enzymes, the pathways to eliminate those toxins. But what I see for a lot of people is those pathways get burdened over time because of exposures, the heavy metal loads, the chemicals and so on. And those pathways shut down. Those chemicals stays in the body, causing oxidative stress, which can affect your stem cell, for example, can affect your telomere, it can cause inflammation. So most of the time, I would say 99% of the time, we start with a detox, okay? We try to identify the toxins causing the health issues, and then we detox those toxins depending on what we see, what we find. There's different ways to do that. Uh, and then, of course, a good diet is important. If you look, for example, at the blue zone, uh, the blue zones of the work of Western Price, of those pioneers from back in the days, we know that a diet should be animal protein based, fat protein, you know, uh, and some vegetables and fruits should be whole foods, fresh. 
So this is the two things that we start working with, with people, with our clients, is educate them on, on diet. Uh, because if you do eat the processed food, again, it causes inflammation, oxidative stress, affecting your stem cells and so on. So it can make your body aging quicker, faster. And then the detox, of course, we need to address the deficiencies and so on in order to allow your body to gently eliminate and get rid of those different toxins that you may be exposed to from your life, your job, your food, and so on. I just sent you a quick note there, uh, Serge, just for our next question, giving you a heads up. Okay. And uh, Katie, you love to look at different diets and carnivore diets and, and all of that. So why don't you lead us into this next question here? Yeah, so I, I definitely you know, experimented with my fair share. I'd say I'm really much more of a pescatarian kind of following a paleo lifestyle, uh, quasi keto. Um, but, you know, I've realized that sometimes the, you know, kind of elimination diet or basically, you know, even restricting yourself to a specific, very restrictive diet like carnivore where you're only eating meat is great temporarily, right? But our body kind of needs a little bit more sustenance and nutrition and you don't want to end up deficient in something because then you have to supplement. It's not the most bioavailable form. I think I'm saying you, I'm speaking your language. I think you understand. So I'm just kind of curious though, because when we did experiment with carnivore, for instance, we were eating a lot of meat and, you know, most people say, well, meat is so expensive, especially the grass fed meat. Yeah. And it's, it's hard to explain to people why you should be, you know, you should seek out this source. So kind of walk me through what you've learned or what you've seen in terms of sourcing organic, antibiotic, hormone-free meat, what makes that so different from your, you know, your typical kind of gr uh, grain-fed, grain-finished meat that you're going to find at most produce and, and um, you know, butcher shops? Great question. That was my first thing that I started to experiment 20 plus years ago when I realized the nutrition had something to do with my health, my issues. And the first thing that I did back then is I thought that being vegan was the answer because that's what we've been told, right? You need to eliminate the animal protein, the animal fat. It's bad for your heart because it's cancer and so on. So I decided to be vegan and for a couple of years, actually. And when I look back, I saw that my health declined, declined fairly quickly, actually. So a couple of years later, I realized that something is wrong. So I eat you know, vegan, I make sure that I cover all my nutrition, my vitamins, I don't have deficiencies, but I don't feel any better. And I try the blood type diet, I'm, I'm blood uh, A, I'm supposed to be vegetarian and so on. So I try that again, I collapsed, my health got worse. So I really started to improve when I turned more to a paleo type of diet, like you said. Uh, so when I started to add some good quality meat and my health got even better because uh, I did paleo for 10, 12 years. So I was eating everything fresh, everything store-bought, you know, organic, good quality, no junk food, no processed food. And I got a lot better. But when I turned carnivore, this is when I really saw a big increase in, in my stamina, my energy, my brain function, my sleep, and so on. And I've been carnivore for quite some time now. And uh, it's really interesting to me because people would tell me, man, meat is expensive. You know, you have to buy, you have to spend more money and so on. But for me, I actually spend less money because I eat less uh, food overall. I eat two meals a day. I eat two steaks. Uh, I may use some, uh, some, some butter, some tallow, some bacon grease. But my diet is really simple. And I have so much energy with this kind of, uh, you know, uh, meat-based diet that I don't buy food as much as before. So my grocery bill is actually is lower than what I used to be on paleo, for example. So the main, to me, the main advantage of carnivore is you don't eat the foods that may be toxic for you. A lot of people don't realize that the plant food contain what we call plant pesticides or plant toxins, the lectins, the oxalates, you know, the phytic acid and so on and so on. And I think that's why my health got a lot better. And a lot of my clients benefit 
from a carnivore diet. The question that we don't know yet, uh, I know some people like Sean Baker, for example, is a big fan of it. He's been carnivore for five years, more or less. And he claims you can live on carnivore for, for years and years for the rest of your life. But we don't really have the science to support that. How are you going to be 20 years down the road or 30 years down the road? We just don't, don't know. Um, but I think for me, yeah, for me, I, I just got bored, you know, and I, 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 I'm curious, like if you find yourself craving, you know, avocados or things that are, you might've traditionally had in the past, you know, plant-based, but yeah. it's, it's hard because I, I feel like there is such a lack of variety. And yeah. so I could do it for a little time, but sustainability, that was, that was tough for me. I think that's the main challenge for most people is to stick with it because there's not a lot of options, right? I mean, you can have different types of meats. I mean, I eat lamb, I, I eat venison, bison, but at the end of the day, it's more or less the same. It's meat, meat, meat. So, I mean, some people like Dr. Paul recommends to add some non-toxic plant foods like avocado, like squashes and so on, which may be helpful for people who cannot stay, stick to the diet for a long term. And I don't see any problem with that. But the problem is a lot of people have leaky gut, have digestion issues. And this is why the carnivore is so beneficial for those because it allows uh, the gut to actually heal itself. So like you mentioned, uh, I do use the carnivore for an elimination diet. Uh, sometimes people are in it for a few months which allowed the gut to get back to normal. And then you add the food back. I think it makes more sense to, to follow more a paleo type of diet for, for, for long term because it's easier to do. You have more options, more choices. And, and then it's fun to play with vegetables, the different flavors, the spices, and so on. But the main advantage that I see for carnivore is if you do eat grass-fed organic meat, is it, you actually get the omega-6 six that you need to get. So this is a lot of confusion, and I like to talk about it because people are confused with omega-3, omega-6. We all know that we don't eat enough omega-3, so we need to increase our fish, seafood, flax seeds, and so on. But people do not focus on omega-6 enough. We all have been told that we eat too much omega-6. It's true. But the omega-6 that we consume is denatured, it's rancid, it's bad, it's toxic. So a good quality grass-fed steak, for example, have good omega-6. And omega-6 is really important for cancer prevention. Omega-6 is, is a magnet for oxygen. So if you don't have enough, in, enough omega-6 in your diet or the one that you consume is toxic, the oxygen that you breathe in doesn't get really into the blood supply and doesn't get transported to the cells. And the work of Dr. Wadberg, which is a German from the 40s or 50s, is really clear about it. Cancer arises when there's a lack of oxygen in the cells. So omega-6 is a major player in that. That's why I'm really a big fan of grass-fed meat because you get your omega-6. Otherwise, you don't get it from a plant-based food. You may, but most people don't get it. So it's important to consume, like you said earlier, food, grass-fed uh, sources of meats. I'm pretty lucky where I live, actually. Uh, a lot of people hunt on the island that I live on. I'm actually going to be getting into that myself as well. Nice. And uh, I enjoy a lot of wild boar, wild elk. I had some beef yesterday. But the thing is, I've, I've done a number of different tests. I did the Dutch test about two months ago, and I was estrogen dominant. Well, guess what I was eating a lot of? I was eating more commercial meat than I should be, especially when we're having things like family dinners and things like that. Buying stuff because it's on sale or just using it up because it's in the freezer. My gut was not happy. And then as soon as I just said, no, I am not eating that garbage meat anymore. I switched more to instead of like chicken sausages, I went more to the wild boar or elk and the quality of the meat is so much better. I'm satisfied longer, but you have to make sure that you also check the ingredients on things like sausage to make sure that there's no MSG or nitrates, check what's in the brine 
and all of that. But you know, that's a great way to like navigate not spending a ton of money on your cuts of meat is to maybe go for like the sausage route, but still make sure that it's like a wild type of meat. Uh, do you have any tips for uh, meat selection? And also the flip side to this, if you're thinking, oh, you know, that's going to be too expensive, things like that. Well, think of how much more expensive it's going to be when you get sick or when you need to do hormone replacement therapy or things like that. So I'd love for you to add to that. I mean, first of all, I think that's why a lot of people who get into veganism, they start feeling better because they cut out all the junk processed meat. I mean, like you said, those meats have hormones, antibiotics. I mean, they vaccinate the, the animals, right? It, it, it's toxic. So I think that's why they benefit. But 90% of them get back to meat after three or five years because they feel better eating good quality meat. Me in Houston, uh, I like to talk to farmers. There's a lot of farmers around. Uh, you, you can barter with them. So I, I use some time to talk to farmers. Listen, I'm going to give you this. Give me some meat. So there's no money involved. So you can barter services, products. And, and a lot of farmers actually appreciate that. Uh, so talk to your local farmer. The food at the stall, typically, it's not as good. And it's most of the time cheaper when you buy in bulk. Uh, I used to buy, and then I still buy, uh, half of a cow, for example. And the meat is for five pounds, a dollars a pound, as opposed to 15, 20 dollars a pound at the store. So it's much cheaper to talk to someone who can raise uh, the animals the way it's supposed to be raised. There's a lot of services out there now that are yeah. even offering grass-fed meat delivered to your door. We actually had yeah. Grassroots, which is sort of this kind of collective of different um, farming, you know, nat natural farmers across the United States that are working with this service. And then you get to pick and you get to actually like figure out where the source of your meat is coming from. And so I think that we're going to see more of that as these kind of trends start to um, become even more popular and people start yeah. to clue in to this stuff. Um, I'd love to switch gears though, away from nutrition and, and talk about some of the kind of bio, um, you know, like mechanical, um, like offer offers and services that are, are really becoming so popular these days between peptides and stem cells, there seems to be a lot that's coming to the forefront, a lot of research on some of these great tools to help address some of the issues that might have been going on in your body for a while that you haven't actually been able to repair, old injuries and stuff. So out of curiosity, because I'm still in that like 30-year-old window where I'm like, I'm not really sure I'm ready to commit to such an investment, again, it's pretty expensive to get the stem cell treatment. Yeah. And on top of that, I, you know, I wonder if it's going to actually be effective, you know, is, and you hear stories on both ends of the spectrum of people who it's worked for really well. And then other people were like, well, you know, it, it helped 60%, right? So yeah. please walk me through some of the things that you're using in clinic right now whether that be peptides or stem cells, and what are you seeing in terms of the longevity of how this is actually sticking and how this is helping people with mobility issues, with joint issues? This is a great question. And then myself, I was puzzled by this years and years ago. Um, when, when I was at Harvard, uh, my research was heart disease, and I was studying uh, heart stem cell. So we need to realize that we have different types of stem cells. Uh, and the one that we are talking about here is the adult stem cells. So each organ in the body has stem cells. For example, we all know this. Uh, if you cut your liver in half, your liver will grow back. So there's some regeneration over there, some healing. And I've seen that with thyroid, for example. I had clients who they, they had a surgery. They removed half of the thyroid and reduced some stem cell therapy. And the thyroid can grow back. So that's the power of stem cell. The power, the power with stem cell is this technology. To me, it's a bit too recent. It's too new. We don't really know how that works. And the problem that we had at Harvard is when we reduce stem cell for the heart, a fraction, one or two percent of people, or I would say, uh, we would use uh, mice and rats back then, uh, animals. 
So some of them will actually develop cancer. So we have to be really careful with that. And you can read online on Google and so on that some people who go to China or different countries, they ended up dying and having all kinds of problems because stem cell is recent, it's new. So I'm not a big fan yet of using stem cell injections, for example, because of that risk. And because sometimes it doesn't work. So I had people spending $15,000, $20,000 going to a country and come back, no results. What I have seen clinically is the body is not ready to take the stem cell in and actually heal the body. So if you have toxins in your joints, uh, which is really common, actually, like arthritis, it is an accumulation of mercury in the joints. So if you have mercury in the knee and you do stem cell, so the mercury stays there and keep uh, inflaming the, the joints, the stem cell won't do anything. So the first thing that I do with my client is we do a detox, joint specific or toxin specific. So if the joint is inflamed because of pesticide, okay, let's detox the pesticide and do stem cell. Me, I'm not a fan, like I said, of injection. So I'm more of a fan of supporting our own stem cell with nutrition or different products, like you mentioned, peptide. Uh, I'm a big fan of the X39 patches. I, I don't know if you have this in Canada. So those patches uh, stimulate your body to make the copper peptide. Uh, I think we talked about it last time uh, when, I, when I was on the show. So the copper peptide is really, really beautiful and amazing to stimulate your stem cell regeneration. And I use products from Germany, from uh, Switzerland, from France to support uh, our stem cells to regenerate what is not working well in the body. So I use products specific for each organ uh, in the body, for joints, for vertebrae. I have people with RA, with lupus, uh, with dementia, with Parkinson, uh, being able to reverse these different conditions. Uh, again, uh, I'm not uh, saying that we can cure everything, but I've seen really amazing results with stem cell technology. But at the end of the day, we need to go back to foundation which is diet, because if you eat junk food every day and you inject stem cell, the stem cell won't do anything. And then we have to make sure that deficiencies are being addressed. And the major one that I see with people is magnesium. If you have magnesium deficiency, the stem cell won't really take in and really repopulate the organs. So we need to look at these different factors. And unfortunately, it comes down to I get to a diet, a toxin issue. But stem cell, I believe, is the future. I can see the potential in it, uh, but it's a little bit too soon to use those different uh, technology. But if you can support your own body's productions of stem cell, that's amazing. I really like your more quote unquote conservative approach, because if I've learned anything in the rejuvenation space, it's always the second, third iteration of offering a technique, yeah. give us seven, eight years of development for things to be kind of sussed out, uh, you know, yeah. har harnessing those, those stem cells and peptides and how they're applied. There's a lot of nuances that goes into applying things clinically. So I like that. But a lot of consumers might not like that because they're always looking for that magic bullet and they just want to show up to an appointment, have someone inject some stem cells and call it a day. But I like your approach. And I also really like this idea of the copper peptide patch. Copper peptide has been used in medical grade skincare. I've worked with uh, peptides and skincare for like 11 years now. And it's, it's so key just to give your body and your skin cell receptors the cofactors that they need like peptides. And we use uh, plant-based stem cells. Actually, I've used serums with plant-based stem cells uh, that come from like apples in Switzerland, which is really yes. cool. So they don't always have to come from an animal source. They can come from a plant source as well. Katie, you want to jump in here? Yeah. Yeah, I just want to say one quick anecdote about the copper peptide thing in skincare. So I actually uh, have been pretty uh, like routine and religious with my derma rolling recently, and you sent me some copper peptides. I have to say there is nothing in my like product shelf of, you know, skin creams and lotions that works quite as efficiently and as effectively as using the vitamin C serum and the peptides in tandem 
after a derma rolling session. Yeah. My skin, I mean, it just looks so much more vibrant and elastic the next day. And, it, you know, to think about, okay, that's just happening on a surface level. What would happen if that happened internally? So I'm really curious about this copper peptide patch. I'm certainly going to look into it. And, you know, in the kind of you know, frame of talking about peptides. I'm, I'm, I've been experimenting with a, an oral supplement of BPC 157. I'm sure, you know, you know, a lot about peptides. I'm yeah. a little scared with needles, so I'm not ready to quite self inject. However, I've been using it supposedly good for inflammation, but I think it's very hard to decipher or hard to say certainly that it's working. So out of curiosity, is there you know, is, is the oral supplement going, I, I kind of know the answer here, but is the oral supplement going to be as efficacious as the injection? And most importantly, tell me a little bit more about like where you see the future of something like BPC-157 going. How is it going to become more accessible? Because I don't know if everyone is willing to make those injections on their own right now. Yeah. I mean, there's a time and a place for injections. I used to do that, not so much anymore. But, you know, sometimes I see people, they are so sick. They are dealing with chronic issues like cancer or autoimmune problem. And their gut is so messed up that whatever you do uh, with vitamins or herbs, it's not working. So you have to bypass uh, the GI tract. And this is where the injections, are. I have a nurse that we use to inject whatever we need to do to support the body. So there's a time and place for that. But like Rachel, you said a few minutes ago, people, I believe, are looking for more quick fixes, quick fixes, quick results. So I'm not a big fan of injecting things in the body. Uh, I'm more of a, uh, of a fan of eating the nutrition because we don't know what our foods, what everything our food contains. There's phytonutrients, there's antioxidants. We just don't know everything. So when we eat whole foods, you actually nourish your body with everything that your body needs that you may not know what you're feeding your body with. So there's a time and place for like the BPC-157 uh, or the copper peptide or those IV vitamin infusion, cocktail myers and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, my goal or philosophy is to fix the body and you get everything from the food that you eat. So it's always better to take it orally by mouth so your body can process it and your body can bring it to where it needs to go. Because when you do injection, you bypass the whole thing. Uh, you don't know the side effects potentially that can cause in the body. We just don't know. But unfortunately, people are looking for quick results. And that's one way to achieve that. Interesting. I love uh, hearing your thoughts on this because you're you're as legit as they come as a medical researcher, which is which is awesome. I love your conversation on the mechanism of action, potentially bypassing the GI tract might not be the best option. But I see some of my favorite people doing their own peptide therapies. Yeah. I you know, I've considered it myself, but I always like things to be around for a little while. Yes. In your experience, what would you say is the secret to longevity? What are your most vibrant clients doing? And what uh, when you see clients thriving, kind of like what lights you up? What's like, what's the secret sauce? This is the question that a lot of people would like to know, right? Let's go, let's get back to the blue zone, right? Uh, the blue zone is really famous. I believe it's seven countries or populations. Uh, they live the longest uh, on the earth. And when you look at the diets, so a lot of people are focused on diet, food. What do they do? And a lot of them have different diets. It's really broad, actually. Some people have 20, 25% of saturated fat in the diet. Uh, the Japanese is mostly 90% of carbs, a little bit of animal protein. But the one thing that we can see in common among all these is happiness. So all of them have a sense of belonging to a community. Uh, and they are happy. They are stress-free. Their life is just amazing. How, how beautiful they, they live. Uh, no stress. I think that's the main thing that will help you to live longer is to help us handling and addressing our stress level and trying to live uh, peacefully and happily in this crazy, uh, this craziness. 
So that's what I try to do with a lot of my clients is try to teach them what to do, of course, physically, but getting back to the question you asked earlier, the mind, the mind is so important and powerful. Is your mind is stressed and, and so on. Whatever you do physically, it won't work. And I see that with people. They eat well, they do everything, they exercise, but they're still dealing with some issues until you have stress the mind, the stress. What do you do personally? How do you address your own stress? Me, I'm a fan of prayer. So I will pray, I will meditate, I will journal, I will walk, and I will listen to good calming music. So that's what that's my routine uh, in the morning and the night before I go to bed so I can have a good night of sleep. Wait, so you don't watch the news 24-7? You're not watching the scariest show on Netflix before you go to bed? You're not eating a ton of, you know, like processed food before? No okay. scare porn, what? Are you doing any of that stuff? <laughs> I, I used Shocking. to do all that, but at some point I had to stop because I could see the the Facebook, you know, the social media, the iPad I was using, it was just affecting my, 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 my life, actually, my sleep pattern. Let's finish off our episode here on, you know, my opinion. I think that things like EMFs, radio frequencies, electromagnetics are probably one of the biggest health threats that we know of right now, especially with all these towers going up. Um, seemingly overnight, I just went down the highway the other day and there were like four there that were not there last year. So tell us about the research. And I mean, we're going to need to do a follow-up episode with yeah. you for sure. Dr. Serge, tell us about the research you know about pertaining to the impacts of EMFs and how can we protect ourselves in potentially detox? I do off-grid days. That's how, that's how I navigate this, but what do you do? So I do a few things, and you're right, the 4G, 5G, and now they're talking about 6G and so on. It, it's just highly toxic. And here in Texas, um, about tw 12 months ago, we had five uh, towers of 5G. And now there's hundreds of hundreds. I mean, you can track online. There's maps that can will tell you where the towers are. And like every corner, there's a tower now. And I've seen a lot of radiation poisoning, actually, in, in my clients. So it does impact. There's no doubt about it. Your pineal gland is affected, as affecting your sleep pattern, your thyroid, your adrenals, and so on. It is a stress on the body. And we need to detox that. Me, I do two things. One, I use cell phone blockers, right? Or iPads, or all those different blockers. Some of them really, really work to neutralize the 5G. And every night, part of my routine, I do what we call a PEMF uh, map. So the PMF is an amazing technology to detox the 5G and the electromagnetic radiations from, uh, I mean, from TVs, iPads, and all that stuff. So these are the two things that I personally do to detox uh, the 5G and all that. What about grounding? Do you find yourself going outside in nature, taking your shoes off, getting, you know, balancing out those negative and positive ions? Yeah. I've looked into PMF therapy. To be yeah. quite frank, like it's very expensive to get some of the yes. devices out there on the market, you know, $20,000. And here we are back to stem cell prices, right? Yeah. So we, I mean, I, I think we definitely need a follow up because I really want to dive into PMF. I think yes. it's something that we know very, I personally know very little of. I I think we're still learning more about but yeah like back to the whole grounding idea are you going to get some of the same effects as you would doing yeah. pmf i mean i do grounding don't get me wrong because i love grounding i've been doing for for 12 years and plus but it doesn't really detox the 5g radiation issue so it's good to rebalance your positive negative electrons and uh, and all that but when it comes to 5G, it's really using PMF, for example. Some people will do infrared sauna. That helps as well, right? Uh, nutrition, of course. And detox. A lot of people don't realize that like aluminum, mercury, arsenic, all those metals are magnetic in nature. So when you have those metals in your body and you're exposed to 5G radiations, it will move, literally will move the metals into your brain, your body. People who have brain fog will have Parkinson or dementia over time. So oftentimes when we detox those metals, you're not as sensitive to the 5G or radiations because you're cleaner in the body and you don't have the metals and the side effect uh, from that. 
Yeah, this is really interesting because you know what the symptoms are for radiation sickness, nausea, headache, general feelings of unwellness which you know that's a whole other topic with what's going on right now but i noticed this for sure so i do epsom salt baths with baking soda like pretty well every night love the Mm -hmm. sauna get off grid as often as i can where i'm out of cell reception one to two times a week that really helps me so dr serge tell everybody where they can find you how they can work with you your show and we're definitely going to have you back on here of course uh, I would be excited to come back. So people, you can join me at, uh, you have my website at the bottom. So science.drsergregory.com. So you can reach out to me through the, the website, through email. You can find me on Facebook as well, my first and last name. Uh, so don't hesitate to reach out to me. And your show, tell everybody about your show, the name of it, Seek, Seek for the Truth, right? Correct. So Seek for the Truth. So once a week, I have a guest and you were on my podcast actually a few months ago. And we'd like to get you back again. Uh, so once a week, uh, I have a guest a little bit like you guys. And we talk about different topics when it comes to health. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for joining Katie and I here on the Beauty and the Biohacker podcast. Be sure to hit up our favorites page at beautyandthebiohacker.com where you can actually find a promo code on the meat source that we're talking about, where you're supporting a cooperative of local farmers. You can get some discounts, use our affiliate codes. And yeah, let's uh, come back here next week on the Beauty and the Biohacker podcast. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell on YouTube so that you know when new episodes are dropped. And thanks everybody for hanging out with us today. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for tuning into Beauty and the Biohacker today. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to leave a comment or share it on your social media account and we'll give you a shout out. And don't forget to head over to beautyandthebiohacker.com to check out all our episodes and our favorites page where we include our curated list of products with special discount codes just for you guys. And while you're there, sign up for our newsletter because we're sharing some exclusive content and give ways you won't want to miss.